I figured. Well, the waiting game is over. Hello everyone, and welcome to your complete and ultimate Yelan guide. Yelan is one of the best 5-star characters in the game, and arguably the current strongest Hydro character. So this video is to hopefully guide any current or future Yelan owners on how to roughly build and play her. This video will cover all of the following in order. General playstyle, talent overview, weapon options, artifacts sets and stats, team comps, constellation overview, as well as an Abyss 12 showcase. All in an as condensed manner as possible. Chapters and timestamps are all below. Just as a side note, this is my first guide that is recorded on my free-to-play account, as I do not have Yelan on my main account. Because of this, my Yelan is not as strong as I would like to demonstrate, since my artifacts on this account are not as good as those on my main. There will also be a few clips recorded with another C0 Yelan, courtesy of my friend Jasper. With all that out of the way, let's get right into the guide. Yelan has a very simple but very strong kit. At free to play levels, she is generally used as an off field hydro applicator as well as a sub DPS. At dolphin to whale levels, she can be a main DPS given the right team comps. Yelan is primarily burst dependent, with her burst's exquisite throws dealing hydro damage as well as applying copious amounts of hydro for a main DPS to interact with, such as Vape Hu Tao or Diluc. Because she applies so much Hydro and works off-field, she is usually the best option for causing Bloom reactions as well. If you are at all familiar with playing Sing Cho, Yelan will feel right at home as she plays nearly the exact same way but contributes much more damage and has an easier time getting her burst back up due to her lower skill cooldown and energy cost. Because she is such a good Hydro applicator, she works in the large majority of teams and is very flexible as a result. Her skills dash also happens to make her one of the best overworld traverses in the game. With her signature weapon and maybe some constellations, Yelan does become a very capable main DPS. Of course, we'll get into her constellations once we reach that section of the video, but Yelan's flexibility naturally means that her own supports can be very flexible. However, you will have to keep in mind that since Yelan's entire kit scales off HP, she will not benefit from attack buffers, making a character like Bennett a little less useful to her. Starting with her normal attack, Yelan's normal attack string deals physical damage, which is nothing special. Her charge shot does hydro damage when fully held, and is also pretty standard for a bow character. However, Yelan also does have a very unique charge shot known as Breakthrough Barb, or more commonly abbreviated to BTB. Breakthrough is indicated when the bracelet on Yelan's right hand is glowing, and having it will give your next charge shot unique properties. A Breakthrough Barb charge shot will charge much more quickly, at 80% faster than a normal charge shot. Additionally, it will also deal AoE Hydro damage, which scales off Yelan's max HP. Once you fire off a BTB, you will not have Breakthrough unless you gain it back, of which there are only two ways. The first is when you are out of combat for longer than 5 seconds, after which Yelan will automatically gain Breakthrough. This can occur even when Yelan is off-field. The second method we'll discuss when we get to her elemental skill. IMO, this talent is still worth leveling a little bit, as BTB is a nice amount of damage you can dish out occasionally, but it is the lowest priority to level compared to her other two talents. Yelan's elemental skill is one of the coolest looking skills in the game. When tapped, Yelan will rush forward and zip up any enemy close to her auto-targeting range. When held, you can control the direction Yelan runs in for a maximum of 3 seconds. Enemies are tagged with her lifeline, and they will take hydro damage scaling off Yelan's max HP once she finishes running. A few things to note about this skill, Yelan does have super armor while she's running, though it isn't super strong, so she can still be interrupted by heavy attacks from enemies. This skill also has very slight crowd control, as enemies will be pulled in towards each other once the lifeline explodes. Finally, each enemy tagged has a 34% chance of granting Yelan breakthrough, allowing you to do a BTP charge shot right after. The scaling on this skill is quite high, and so I do recommend leveling this talent alongside or at least slightly behind her burst. This skill has a 10 second cooldown, applies 1 U Hydro, and generates 4 Hydro Particles when enemies are tagged, making it a very good particle generator as well. Yelan's Elemental Burst is the star of her kit, so let's go over it in detail. On cast, Yelan's dice will become active and stay with the active character. 
When the active character uses normal attacks, or when Ye Lan uses her E, she will deal 3 instances of Hydro damage each time. Because it follows nearly standard ICD, this does mean that she applies Hydro on every wave of arrows. So for those who are curious, yes, she does apply less Hydro than Sing Cho at Constellation Zero, which may prove to be an issue if you run something like a Hu Tao team, as things like Hu Tao's N1CA may not vape, and Albedo's Solar Isotoma can remove the Hydro gauge. This talent is the highest priority to crown, since it is the bulk of Ye Lan's damage. Which speaking of, it does a lot of damage, even at free to play levels. This burst is extremely strong when you use her with reaction based comps that require Hydro, which include reverse vapors like Diluc and Hu Tao, or Hyperbloom comps. But even with teams that don't necessarily need Hydro application, Ye Lan is still very flexible to be slotted in. On my free to play account, I really like using her with Wanderer since her damage is so high that she is such a great DPS for the team damage. Finally, for some bonus info, the burst initial cast deals 2 units of Hydro, which is useful for some combos. In my case, I really like this combo using Kazuha and Bennett, as Bennett can vape his burst without removing Hydro on the enemy, allowing Kazuha to then swirl Hydro while infusing Pyro, then letting Ye Lan vape her E with Kazuha's buff. This is a very cool combo that I like, and is only possible because of her 2 unit Hydro application. And just very briefly, I want to talk about Ye Lan's passive talents. First off, her A4 gives your active character a percentage damage bonus when her burst is active. The maximum bonus you can gain is 50%, though you will only reach this value at the very tail end of her burst anyways. So I don't recommend trying to optimize your rotational damage around this passive. Still, it is a nice chunk of extra damage. Secondly, her A1 increases Ye Lan's HP, the more elemental types there are in the party. For those curious, having two other elemental types with Hydro Resonance active will end up being more HP than a team with four different elements. This is good to keep in mind with something like a Hu Tao Hyper Vape team with both Ye Lan and Sing Cho. Because of Ye Lan's unique HP scaling kit, her weapon options are a bit more straightforward than normal. We'll go over them in the order of star rarity as usual, but please do note that star rarity does not necessarily indicate that one might do more damage than the other. Since there are only two bows in this game that give HP at all, all other bows perform very similarly in terms of damage, with some providing more utility than others. Energy recharge bows will also do slightly better than others in terms of damage if you run 4 emblem on Ye Lan. Starting with the 5 star options. Unsurprisingly, being Ye Lan's signature weapon, Aqua Simulacra is her best in slot. It increases HP by a decent amount as well as giving percentage damage bonus when enemies are nearby. Its massive crit and HP fulfillment also means that you can allocate a lot more substats into energy recharge, which is particularly important if you do not have Ye Lan's Constellation 1. Overall, a fantastic weapon, but will have specific build requirements if you do not have her C1 and wish to rotate her burst often while maintaining high damage. The only other 5 star weapon I recommend is Elegy for the End. This is still a good option for Ye Lan, as it can help satisfy her ER requirements while providing buffs to the entire party. However, the actual support potential of this weapon will heavily depend on the team comp, as it really favours reaction based comps due to the EM buff. Still, it is a good option if you do not have Simulacra. Now, because of Ye Lan's HP scaling, typical 5 star DPS bows don't actually work amazingly on her. Polar Star, Skyward Harp, Thundering Pulse, and Hunter's Path are all viable, but they all each have their own issues. As such, I generally do not recommend using any of them, as these bows are better served on other characters, and Ye Lan's 4 star options perform very similarly while potentially offering more utility. For the 4 star options, now, the option I recommend to nearly anyone who does not have Aqua Simulacra is the Favonius Warbow. This nearly completely fulfills Ye Lan's energy requirements and gives a decent amount of energy particles to the whole team. As mentioned previously, this will also provide some decent bonus damage if you run 4 Emblem on her. Overall, this is my favourite option for everyone without her signature weapon. Next up, Stringless is a pretty interesting option. It gives a nice amount of bonus damage to both her skill and burst, and its EM substat is occasionally useful for vapes, still I generally prefer Favonius as ER is a very valuable substat for Ye Lan, while Elemental Mastery is not always useful. To be honest, I don't really recommend any other 4 star options beyond Favonius, but these options are also viable. Fading Twilight provides both ER and percentage damage bonus, which is also decent on Ye Lan for her damage, 
Viridescent Hunt gives crit rate, which makes building easier, but has a practically useless passive. And Sacrificial Bow acts as a faux C1, but I don't really like this weapon because of its massive downtime and lack of team utility compared to Favonius. And finally, I know I don't normally recommend 3 star options, but the Recurve Bow gets a mention. It is the only weapon on this list other than Aqua Simulacra that gives HP, and because of this, it actually deals more damage than any of the other options previously listed, other than Aqua Simulacra. As a free-to-play option, this weapon is really good for damage, though you will have to balance your stats with an ER Sands. I still generally would recommend Favonius as it is easier to balance your stats while giving the team utility, but this is still a surprisingly great option for Yelan. Keep in mind that this weapon is not a gacha item, and is only obtainable from chests and talking to specific NPCs. Moving on to artifact stats. Because Yelan is a DPS, she does follow a very standard DPS build path. Her sands should generally be HP percent, her goblet being hydro damage bonus, and her circlet being crit. If you are not running an ER weapon and have Yelan at C0, then you might be lacking in some energy recharge, in which case running an ER sands might also be more viable, as Yelan's burst uptime is the most important thing to maintain. Also, for my Aqua Simulacra gamers, if you have generally high quality pieces on Yelan, you will have the option to run an HP circlet instead. This does actually end up being better than the typical HP Hydro crit setup, but it needs the average quality of your pieces to be very good. If you can achieve at least 30 to 35 crit value on average on every single artifact, then you can consider looking into running this setup. Just like any standard build, I do recommend at least 70% crit rate, and your crit damage should be over 130%, assuming you are not running a crit weapon. For those with Aqua Simulacra, you should have no issues hitting over 70% crit rate with around 220% crit damage, depending on how high your crit rate and energy recharge is. For those running an HP circlet instead of crit, I would not recommend running an HP circlet if you cannot hit at least a 70-200 ratio. As for how much ER you need, this will highly depend on your team comp and weapon. For example, if you run another Hydro Party member, as well as use something like Favonius Warbow, then your ER requirements will be much lower. As a general rule of thumb, I recommend at least 200% ER for C0 solo Yelan. If you are running another Hydro Party member or have another Favonius user, you can possibly drop this to around 160 to 180%. If you have Yelan's Constellation 1, you can drop this down to an even further 130-140% to ER. It's very hard to gauge how much ER you exactly need, so I would recommend testing it out until you can confidently maintain nearly 100% uptime on your burst in a team rotation, then settling for that much ER. Moving on to set recommendations, Yelan's artifact sets are very bog standard for a burst reliant DPS. Unsurprisingly, 4 piece emblem will be her general option. It gives her 20% ER as well as gives her bonus damage the more ER she has. This maximizes her burst damage, but will have lower skill and BTB damage than the other sets. If you wish to maximize Yelan's entire kit, 2 piece Heart of Depth and 2 piece Tenacity of the Millilith may be a better option. With this set, her E and BTB will generally deal more damage and might also be a better option for burst damage if your 4 emblem pieces aren't as good quality. I generally don't recommend this though, unless you at least have a Constellation 1, as her E and BTB damage don't make up the majority of a DPS. Either of these two set bonuses can also be replaced with 2 piece Noblesse Oblige. Finally, for my C6 gamers, you can use the previously mentioned sets, but if you just want to maximize her front loaded damage on her C6's BTBs, 4 piece Heart of Depth will be your way to go. However, this set is really meant for front loaded damage. But if you have C6 Yelan, you will probably destroy everything the moment you use Yelan C6 anyways. Yelan is ridiculously flexible, and she can be put into nearly any team archetype. Her best teams are naturally going to be ones that require an off field hydro applicator, such as with Hu Tao, Diluc, Hyper Bloom teams. Milu comps, etc, etc. As such, it is very difficult to narrow down how good she might be for your team, considering she's one of those characters that will probably work anyways since she's just so OP. That being said, while she is very flexible, she may not always be the best option for the team. It is important to keep in mind that Yelan's entire kit scales completely off of HP, so using attack buffers like Bennett, Sara, or a Noblesse Oblige holder will end up being a bit useless. That said, if you already play someone like Sing Cho in something like a national team, you are free to replace him with Yelan, as she has less energy requirements and deals more damage. I do want to mention a popular Hu Tao team, 
being Hu Tao, Sing Chou, Albedo, and Zhongli. This is one of those situations where you actually cannot replace Sing Chou with Ye Lan, at least not at Constellation Zero. This is because Ye Lan simply does not apply enough Hydro, and thus Albedo's Solar Isotoma can actually remove the Hydro Gauge, which in turn will make Hu Tao miss some vapes. This is why I generally recommend running a Hyper Vape team for Hu Tao instead, using both Sing Chou and Ye Lan. This will provide Hydro Resonance, which aids Hu Tao, Ye Lan, and Zhongli's kids, while providing more than enough Hydro for Hu Tao to never miss a vape. In general though, Ye Lan is really flexible and works in nearly any team. As mentioned previously, I also do like using her with Wanderer as a sub DPS, even though her Hydro application is not necessary for such a team. Her damage output is very high, and only you will know how much she can contribute to your teams compared to your build supports and sub DPSs. Ye Lan has some strong constellations, especially some of her early ones and C6, so let's go over them. C1, this gives her an extra charge of her skill. This is a fantastic constellation, as it lowers her ER requirements by a significant amount, and makes her overall traversal pretty OP. In my opinion, this constellation becomes really valuable when you have her signature weapon, as running that weapon will inevitably mean that your ER is lower unless you specifically run an ER Sands, which is not optimal for damage. Having this constellation will generally allow you to run an HP Sands without worrying about burst uptime. Constellation 2. This gives Ye Lan one additional Hydro Arrow per wave of arrows. This effectively improves her Hydro application, which allows her to be run with someone like Albedo, as his Solar Isotoma will no longer be able to remove her Hydro Gauge often. For Hu Tao, this also allows her to consistently do N1CA instead of N2CA while vaping all of her charge attacks. Pretty good constellation, and is also a modest DPS increase at around 20%. Constellation 3 and 5 increase her burst and skills talent levels respectively. Fairly standard, but still good constellations. Constellation 4. This increases her team's max HP after using her skill. This constellation is pretty niche, as not that many characters will benefit from having this. But again, if you play Hu Tao, this will be a very strong constellation to have. And finally, Constellation 6. This is one of, if not the current strongest constellation in the game. After using her burst, all of Ye Lan's normal attacks will become BTBs. These BTBs deal more damage than regular BTBs and are considered charge attack damage. This will last 5 arrows and effectively gives Ye Lan a crap ton of front loaded damage. I unfortunately do not have any Constellation 6 footage as my Ye Lan is Constellation 0, but you can just go look up any video of C6 Ye Lan anyways. If you are looking for the strongest DPS spike in the game, well as of right now, C6 Ye Lan is it. However, I will say that from a value perspective, Raiden's Constellation 2 is still IMO a better choice for those looking for a massive power spike for the Primo gem spent. Overall, Ye Lan has very strong progressive constellations, with each one increasing her damage by non-negligible amounts. Of course, C6 gives her the biggest DPS spike, at which point you will just destroy everything in the game solo. However, I don't really recommend free-to-play players or low spenders pulling for Ye Lan's constellations beyond 1 or 2, as these provide the most utility for the Primo Gems cost. Finally, onto the Abyss Showcase. I will be using my free-to-play Ye Lan on the bottom half of Abyss 12 alongside Wanderer. This will be of the previous Abyss 12, as my account can 36 star this current Abyss, but not in a continuous run. Hence, I think the previous Abyss footage is going to be a better representation of the character. Hey, 
Thank you for watching this Yeland guide. I hope this was useful, and I wish everyone the best of luck building Yeland. Do check out twitch.tv slash dukc as well, where I often stream Genshin Impact. Thanks once again for watching, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one. Take care.